I want to pull back the curtain on some of your most iconic roles in something we like to call behind the scenes. Um, okay, I want juice, dirt, fly on the wall, anything that comes to mind when I mention these movies, if you will, please and thank you. Let's start with Notting Hill. There's so much. Um, oh, give it to me, Hubert. Remember the scene with the brownies? We were sitting around having dinner and it's about who's going to eat the last brownie. Yes. All I remember, Hugh Bonneville, who Americans think is a classy actor, what he got up to during that scene, deliberately putting brownies on my chair so that I would sit on them in my white trousers. And then they could all, they could all laugh at my bum between takes. Oh, my uh, God. I, I remember that. Um, OK, four weddings and a funeral. Well, I, yeah, panic. I, I remember the director, he really... Because we had no money. We made that film for a, a, a minuscule amount of money and in 36 days, and he just lost it all the time. He would throw his cup of tea against the walls. Like, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't make this film. And, uh, <laughs> and we said, well, you have to. You've, you've got to shoot another whole scene here. It's two pages. And, and, and he'd say, oh, but there's five minutes left in the day. And so he'd say, stand against that wall. It was like, and we just stand there in a line, <laughs> and we just see the line with one camera on us. And that is, there is a scene in the film like that. It took seven minutes to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm so glad I asked. Okay, about a boy. About a boy. Uh, he's a big star now, that, not that baby, but the, the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Holt, by the way, and he's hot. Yes, yes, and we chose him for, because he was such a sort of nerd and a geek. <laughs> I know. He, I mean, yeah. with all due respect, he, he is, he's posed as a real outsider boy, and he grew up to be really hot. Yes, yes, he did. Okay, um, uh, Bridget Jones' diary. Well, there you have Renee who was a, a genius uh, at being British Bridget. But I do remember that she went through some interesting phases on the way to getting that, that British accent during rehearsals. Um, she came in for the first read through and she sounded like Princess Margaret. Very, very posh and grand. And then uh, the next time she came in, someone had told her obviously maybe bring it down a bit. Uh, but then she sounded a bit like she'd had a stroke. <laughs> uh, and then she absolutely nailed it. I mean, it's one of the, it's an absolute triumph. And, and of course, she did that accent, uh, not just in the performance, but between takes. And she never reverted to American until the rap party, when that was the first time I'd ever heard her speak with her Texan accent. And I quite honestly found it unconvincing. <laughs> I love that detail. And I love hearing that intel of her process. Great, thank you so much. Okay, Mickey Blue Eyes. <laughs> oh, well, that's Jimmy Kahn. And uh, what can I tell you about? Well, I can tell you that my then girlfriend, Elizabeth Hurley, produced a film. And we had a lot of, let's call them specialists or advisors on the set who knew all about the, the New York mob. Let's just say that. And she was brilliant with them. If we needed anything done, she would flirt with one of these guys and she'd say, she'd go and sit on one of their knees and, and compare their manicures. And say, oh, no, you've got such lovely jewelry and such lovely nails. And they'd do anything for us. We you know if we had a problem with planes going overhead, ruining the soundtrack, one of them would get on the phone and suddenly... JFK had redirected all the planes from that particular part of Manhattan. Oh, um, I, my God. I love that story. I'll never forget you and her stepping out and she was in that Versace safety pin dress. You know, there are, like, iconic moments in fashion, and that will always be one that evening you two stepped out. Uh, well, yeah, it ended up that way, but I, it, was, it was pure fluke. We were, uh, you know, unsuccessful actors. or not. We weren't that unsuccessful, but we were not well-known in any way. And suddenly this big premiere comes along for this film and she has nothing to wear. And I think I, I said, I think you can borrow stuff. I think that's what people do. They, you know, the big designers will lend you something. And so we rang around. We didn't have an assistant or a publicist or anything like that. We plucked up our courage, rang around, and they all said, no, who are you? 
And then Versace said, yes, we got something, but only one thing. And they sent it round, and it was this was the one dress that arrived. And she put it on. And I, I remember being slightly startled by it. it was, <laughs> oh, I bet it. you were. Hot. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, and then the rest is history. It became a thing. It really did. 